I am Marley and I work for the Acute Rehab and the Extended Care Facility at St. Clair's. Is anybody familiar with Acute Rehab? Have you heard of a skilled facility before? Okay. So the difference with an acute rehab and a skilled facility, acute rehab, we focus on stroke patients, we stro uh, focus on spinal cord injury, brain injury, hip fractures, joints. That's a, th uh, a three hours a day of therapy. You come stay with us for about 13 days in a private room, Wi-Fi, doctor sees you daily. Now a skilled facility, you can basically take anybody onto that facility. Um, we have both at St. Clair's. A doctor does not see you every day. It's about once a week, and it's about two hours of therapy, and you have a roommate. So that's the difference. Um, what else can I tell you? I feel like I just said it all really fast. Um, do you have any questions about the difference? Uh, how does Medicare reimburse one over the other? Okay. On an acute rehab, we're billed like a hospital would be. So they pay just like they would pay the hospital, and you don't have to have the three-night stay like you do for a skilled facility. We take any insurance, even the new Meridian and Molina. Does your doctor see you, or is there your doctor on staff? On acute rehab, there are two doctors, Dr. Hegday and Dr. Cool, and they're there every single day. They see you. On a skilled facility, it's Dr. Patel in Bethalto, and he comes out. He comes more than once a week, but not every patient is going to be seen daily, you know, just on their rotation. That's what Medicare requires. So it's not your personal physician, it's the rehab doctor that specializes in rehab. Correct. They're called a physiatrist. And then they can consult, though, with your primary, and then also a neurologist or any specialist. What is the therapy consist of? Uh, well, it depends what you need. Usually, at least, it's physical therapy and occupational. But then if speech is needed, that's there as well. When you get there, they do an evaluation on you and see what you need and then continue the care that way. On acute rehab, um, on every Wednesday, the doctor, the head of therapy services, our social work, um, they'll go in and they'll have a conference to see how well you're progressing and talk about discharge. And the same is done on the skilled facility as well. How can you be sure you get a rear review room? <laughs> It would be really nice when I come screen you. Okay. No. And yes, I am the screener as well for the acute rehab, so I go see all the patients before they come in, you know, willing unless they're coming. You know, I had someone come from the Ozarks. I didn't get to go. But um, I see them before they come. I can go do in-house screens. So say you have a loved one who's at home, has a history of Parkinson's, and that Parkinson's is, you know, kind of acting up. and. They're thinking, you know what, this isn't their normal. You could give me a call. I could come out, take a look, see if they need to come in for maybe about a week or so of train I mean of therapy, and then we get them back home. I didn't hear what you said about insurance coverage. Okay, um, all, we take about every insurance. The only insurance I can tell you right now is Essence that we don't take. But um, Medicare and any of the supplements, um, HMOs, PPOs, we take. And for an acute rehab, they bill just like a hospital would. So you're covered for that 100%. And then for a skilled facility, uh, Medicare pays 80%, and the other 20% is picked up by your supplemental. Thank you. You're welcome. And then the reason you would choose St. Clair's is because we are hospital based and we're. We're not considered, I mean, nothing wrong with nursing home. My grandma lives in one. But you know, kind of the difference of being in the hospital base and not surrounded by people who actually live there. It's only people there doing therapy and we get you back home. What's on the menu this week? Yesterday was eggplant parmesan. Ooh. I know. I don't know what today was. I was here. But um, it's good. I eat there almost every day. And you even have a better menu when you're a patient. More selections. It's better, better. Okay. So I'm going to let Nancy talk next because, again, her her clients remain at their home and they spend some time with her during the day. Hi, my name is Nancy Kirby. I'm the uh, program coordinator for the adult day service. Uh, the difference with that is they just come and stay with us for the day, then they go back home. It could be someone possibly with Alzheimer's, dementia, 
maybe they've had a stroke, they live with a family member, but they're still working. So it's kind of a respite for the day, and that way their family members can go to work and not, work and not worry about them. Um, we are open Monday through Friday from 7 to 5. It's a secure environment, so if they do have Alzheimer's, they can't wander off. We have The doors are alarmed, so it's a very secure place. Um, we do contract with the state of Illinois, and anybody that's under the age of 60 with Office of Rehabilitative Services. So if, there's, if they qualify financially, they can get assistance with payment. Otherwise, it is uh, $72.16 for a full day. That is anything over four hours. Half, four hours or less is just half that amount. Um, we offer a lot of socialization. We do a lot of games, therapy. Uh, we have volunteers that come in and play music. Uh, we have a couple good musical groups that everybody just really loves. Um, we can give medications if they need medications during the day. I am an LPN, so I can get, uh, administer medications with a doctor's order. Um, and we take care of getting all that. We provide a morning snack, evening snack, and a full lunch meal. Today they had turkey dressing and green beans, you know. Um, if they need therapy while they're with us. Um, outpatient therapy is in the building right across from the hospital. So the therapists will come over, take them, and take them over for therapy, then bring them back when they're done. Um, we do have transportation through the ACT bus, and we also have transportation with senior services. If they are with Illinois Department on Aging, or if they're paying <coughs> privately, senior services plus will, can bring them and take them home. Um, we just have someone has to be at home to greet them so that so they Usually they can't drop them off and leave them unattended. Um, there is a little bit of paperwork involved with it, but we, we just like to know about everybody and their interests so that we can keep them stimulated and thinking. And then uh, we do have a support group the last Thursday of every month, other than November and December, for anybody. For if you're taking care of an elderly person, that you're the caregiver, and, you know, it's just a, we meet from one to three and just kind of talk about, we learn from each other and how to make sacrifices and learn little tricks to help us, you know, keep our parents and grandparents at home longer. And then we do have newsletters that go out every, every other month and activity calendars that go out so everybody kind of knows what's going on, you know, coming up and, and stuff like that. So. Um, I did bring some flyers and some information with me that I'll leave here so that if you have any questions, our, our numbers are on there and you can call us, come by tour if this is something that you may, you may be needing, you know, any questions? Yeah, you missed one of your strongest points, you allow pets. We do, actually, well, we have pet therapy that does come in periodically and they bring their pets. We just. Um, Recently had a lady from the Nature Institute brought in everything kind of related to fall. Um, and so that was a lot of fun and the, and the clients get a huge kick out of that, but they really love the pet therapy when they come in. doctor's recommendation? No, we do not have to have a doctor's order at all. I, I, we have, for an example, we have a gentleman, he's, he's just had his 91st birthday. His list with his son, he has no health issues actually, but he's ho he would be home by himself all day long. So he just comes to socialize with everybody while his family's working. You know, we, we do have Alzheimer's, we do have a couple people that have had strokes, you know. We can, we can assist, they need to be somewhat independent, but we can uh, assist them in the bathroom if needed and things like that. Thank you so much. And, oh, sorry. and then when you get to, to uh, when a person gets to the point where um, they maybe need a little help, they, are, they just don't want to live, they don't want the hassle of taking care of a house, taking care of a lawn, they maybe, maybe need a little um, oversight as to their medications. The, we have four floors of St. Clair Hospital that are dedicated to what's called St. Clair's Villa. 
Actually, we're kind of a well-kept <coughs> secret because we're not in a separate building. Um, we do have a sign on the front of the hospital that says St. Clair Villa, but it's kind of small, and, and a lot of people don't realize that we were there, we are there. But the, um, in 19, you know, 2001, uh, four floors of the, the top four floors of the hospital were entirely gutted and made into apartments. We have 64 apartments for what is called supportive living. Now we're not a medical facility, so it's not a nursing home. Each resident or couple has their own apartment. Um, however, we do we can do just about everything else for you. Um, we provide three meals a day and all of their snacks. We do their laundry. We do their housekeeping. Um, the rent and the services, what you pay includes all of your utilities, everything except your phone. And if you have a burning passion for the game show channel, you'll have to pay your own cable. <laughs> but um, everything else is included in that, in that service fee. We have a, a nurse on site five days a week and available by phone 24 seven. We, um, however I said, we're not a medical facility. The residents must be able to, like if, they, if they're a diabetic on insulin, they have to be able to handle their own medication. Um, we cannot give them the medications. We can, over, we can remind them it's time to take their medication, but they have to be able to handle um, things like insulin, eye drops, um, oxygen, any of those things. You have to be able to transfer independently. It, like you can, if you, you need to be able to transfer from your wheelchair to your bed. We can push you in the wheelchair, but you need to be able by yourself. We, we don't have, we're not a nursing facility. We can't lift you out of bed into your wheelchair, okay? We can wheel you somewhere once you're in it. Um, we're also a multi-level facility. Um, and by law, we cannot have anyone who has a, a primary or secondary diagnosis of dementia. That would mean a level of care that we're not qualified to give you. So um, just about any other medical condition, if you can handle most of it on your own, you can live with us. Uh, by law, we have to see our residents once a day to know that you're all right. But other than that, we are not in your life unless you want us to be in your life. You know, we'll, like I say, we cook your meals, we serve your meals. If you don't want to come to the dining room, you don't have to come to the dining room, we'll bring it to you. Um, if you don't want to play bingo, you don't have to play bingo. Bingo is serious business, okay? Yeah. Um, and, but if you don't want to play bingo, you don't have to play bingo. You're, it's, it's your own apartment for you to do with as you wish. Now, there are certain things you can't do, like you cannot bring your car engine inside and take it apart and put it back together in your apartment. That's been tried before, it's not allowed. Um, but anything else, and yes, we do take pets. We are the only facility of our kind who, te who does take small pets. Um, however, you have to be able to take care of the pet yourself. You have to be able to take it outside to do its business, or if it's a pet cat that you have inside, take care, care of its litter box and those kind of things. Um, because we are, um, the way, because of the, the way that we were, were made in the beginning, we are under an obligation for low income people which means that we have an income cap. You cannot make more than $28,200 a year in income. Now that's not your assets, that's your income. Um, people sometimes are confused because the cost, the monthly cost is, if you times that by 12, it's more than the 28,200, $28, which we realize that, but it's the state, what can I say? Um, but if you are, if you are not able to pay that, you go. You would be on Medicaid, and people, the the person themselves, Medicaid. The way Medicaid works, they let you pay for certain insurances. They let you like some of the drug plans. They'll let you keep paying for, and then out of that, out of your monthly income, you keep ninety dollars for yourself, and everything else goes to pay your board. After that, Medicare picks up. The, I mean, Medicaid picks up the remaining. The remaining um, cost. So basically, you can live with us for your Social Security, um, and that's all. Medicaid will pick up the rest of the cost. And you don't, if you like, for instance, if you private pay in the beginning and then you have to switch to Medicaid, it's a paper change. You don't have to change apartments. You don't have to do anything. A lot of people say, oh, I can't live on ninety dollars a month, but 
all of your, everything is paid except for your phone. Um, we, take, we take the residents, whoever would like to go, twice a month we take them to um, Walmart to shop. We have all kinds of activities for them. Um, so like I said, unless, now if you have a car and you have to pay insurance and you have to pay gas, then $90 a month is, is difficult, I admit. But everything else basically is paid for for you. Um, like I say, we, we very we uh, are very glad to take care of you. We um, will be in your life as much or as little as you want us in your life, um, and we try to make a pleasant living environment for our residents. <laughs>